Christina, are you really promoting a product from InfoWars? The site run by Alex Jones, the guy who has politicized tragedy after tragedy, the guy who is the epitome of fake news, the guy who has caused tremendous anguish to parents who lost their children in a mass shooting. I mean, you are delusional enough to believe that cooked food is harmful and that B12 deficiency in vegans is a myth. So maybe you believe his bullshit too. It is a common myth that many vegans are B12 deficient. This is a myth because there are also a lot of meat eaters and people who aren't vegan who are B12 deficient. Meat eaters also being at risk for B12 deficiency doesn't mean that there aren't many vegans who are B12 deficient. Those two statements can be true simultaneously. B12 deficiency may be a problem for omnivores. This study found that 39% had levels in the low normal range, which may still be too low since some people have exhibited symptoms of deficiency within this range. And this doesn't seem to be due to age or meat consumption. So so supplementing for B12, either by taking a tablet or eating foods fortified with it, this may be prudent for everyone, you know, not just the elderly or vegetarians or vegans, but this doesn't mean that people in these three groups aren't at greater risk. They are. The research is clear that B12 is a huge concern for vegans. The deficiency rates reported for specific populations were as follows. 62% among pregnant women, between 25% and almost 86% among children, 21 to 41% among adolescents, and 11 to 90% among the elderly. Higher rates of deficiency were reported among vegans compared with vegetarians and among individuals who had adhered to a vegetarian diet since birth compared with those who had adopted such a diet later in life. From the Epic Oxford study, out of 250 omnivores, only one had levels below 130. Out of 250 vegans, 150, well over half of them. And the reason is simple. Vegetarians are at risk for vitamin B12 deficiency due to suboptimal intake. Plants are not a source of B12. If you are vegan and you are not supplementing for B12, you are putting yourself at risk for deficiency. Now, what exactly does that mean? Signs of a B12 deficiency include shaky hands, blurry vision, being faint and dizzy a lot. Yeah, but it's a lot more than that. Untreated deficiency can lead to permanent nerve damage. I find it pretty telling that Christina does not even mention this. She doesn't make it clear how serious this condition is, that it can make you go blind, deaf, crazy, or even kill you. She's so proud of herself for having low LDL and being heart attack proof, but she doesn't at all seem concerned that B12 deficiency may increase the risk for cardiovascular disease. B12 is a flora that's produced in your colon. Some people produce it and some people don't. So she seems to be implying that we can absorb the B12 that we need from our intestines and avert deficiency that way. This is a claim that many raw vegans make. This is actually possible, but it's not probable. People who are on a raw or vegan diet for an extended period of time, and by extended I mean like 10, 20, 30 years, can become B12 deficient. While true that at the time they become vegan, some people have enough B12 stored in their liver to prevent overt B12 deficiency for many years, people often misinterpret this to mean that you only need to consume a tiny amount once every few years. Actually, to build up such stores, it takes years of consuming B12 beyond one's daily needs, unless you are using supplements which can build up stores more quickly. Some people do not have large enough stores of B12 to be relied upon for optimal health, even for short periods. Saying that it takes years and years and years to develop a deficiency and so it isn't something that you have to worry about today is flat out wrong and so, so dangerous. It doesn't always happen, but it can happen. Just like anything else in this world can happen. What? No, they, they are not at all similar. Saying that this is like like you're, you're out driving and you get hit by a drunk driver. That is something that just happens, right? It's 100% out of your control. But becoming B12 deficient because you didn't take a supplement was 100% within your control. This is something that can be avoided. This is something that we as vegan activists can help avoid by just telling people how serious this is and relaying correct information. Please, people, take your goddamn supplement. Please. Many people want to know if they're B12 deficient, and I keep my answer down to a very simple response. And I say this to anybody who thinks they're deficient in any type of vitamin or mineral. 
get yourself checked before you make any self-diagnosis. This is essential. In virtually every other case, this would be correct. This would be good advice. Self-diagnosing can have really serious consequences. But when it comes to B12, there is no reason to wait. If you are vegan and you are not supplementing, start supplementing, period. This isn't like something, you know, like iodine or iron where getting more than you need can be very, very harmful. There's no evidence that supplementing for B12 is harmful. The most we have are a few anecdotes of people breaking out in mild acne-like symptoms, and that's while consuming huge amounts well beyond recommended levels. B12 is cheap, safe, and effective. B12 deficiency is deadly. It's not a hard choice. There are far too many people nowadays who wake up in the morning and think, oh, I think I'm deficient in vitamin E. So they go to the health food store, they buy a bunch of vitamin E pills when they may not even be deficient in vitamin E. The problem with that is that the second that you start taking a supplement, not just an overdose of a supplement, but a supplement for a long period of time, your body becomes dependent on you taking it and it begins to stop the production of that vitamin or mineral itself and you become dependent on taking supplements. Vitamin E is an essential nutrient. That means that our bodies don't produce it. We have to get it from food or supplements. Taking more vitamin E than we need is not going to cause our bodies to produce less of it because our bodies don't make it in the first place. The fact that you don't know this and yet you feel qualified to talk about nutrition, to instruct people on how to be healthy, I, I don't even, I don't know how to respond to that. If you think you're deficient in B12, there are any lab test nows on pretty much any corner that you can find now. There's places where you can get your blood checked almost anywhere. You can go to the doctor's office, literally anywhere. Again, you know so little about the subject and yet you feel qualified to talk about it. A serum B12 level below the normal range indicates that B12 levels are becoming depleted. However, a serum B12 level in the normal range does not ensure that B12 levels are healthy. Unfortunately, medical practitioners still use serum B12 to evaluate function, even of vegans. Methylmalonic acid builds up in the system when B12 status is poor. It is the most specific test for measuring B12 status because B12 is the only necessary coenzyme needed to keep levels low. I experienced this for myself years ago when I was raw and I hadn't been supplementing, and I started to kind of get out of the Doug Graham raw stuff and think, hmm, maybe I should start supplementing. And so I got tested and I went to my doctor and I got a blood test and it showed that I was normal. I was in like the low end, you know, normal range. And then I got my MMA tested. I did a urine test that cost like $200 or something. And it showed that my levels were elevated. I started supplementing. And again, if you go to see a doctor, you're probably just gonna get a blood test, a serum test. They're probably not gonna have the MMA test. You might have to order something online. That's what I had to do. And again, it costs like $200. And $200 for what exactly? Some people might think that instead of worrying about getting a reliable supply of B12, they will just have their MMA or homocysteine levels tested. And if they are fine, then there's no reason to get a reliable supply of B12 for the time being. The problem with this is that you never know when you will hit the point at which MMA or homocysteine levels start to rise. They may stay low for years, months, or only days after they are tested and found to be healthy. At this time, there is no test that can tell you how long your B12 status will be adequate if you are not getting a reliable source of B12. So don't rely on testing. There is no reason to. It takes up your time. It costs you money. And some of us don't just have money to spend. Christina, some of us cannot afford $20 a day raw food diet, right? And we can't afford $200 plus for a urine test. Again, Please, just take your B12. I think around my nine year raw anniversary, I went and got my blood taken. We showed that a raw vegan can be healthy over a 10 year time period and not be deficient in anything. My blood lab results came out amazing. I wasn't deficient in anything. This is so dangerous. She's basically saying, see, look, I've been vegan for years without supplementing for B12 and I'm fine. And you know, she might be fine. She might be fine for years to come, just like there are people who smoke and never get lung cancer. Anecdotes are not proof. We should not be making 
personal health decisions based on anecdotes. The evidence is clear that smoking increases your risk for lung cancer and not supplementing for B12 when you are vegan increases your risk for permanent nerve damage. For those of you who have gotten your blood checked and you are B12 deficient and you're looking for a good B12 supplement, the Global Healing Center B12 supplement. I like this one because it's not a capsule. It's in liquid form. It is a vegan form of B12. Implying that most B12 supplements aren't vegan? I mean, sure, if you buy a tablet with like lactose in it, which I have seen, or like some sort of gummy with gelatin, but for the most part, almost all of the B12 supplements that I've seen just in regular grocery stores are vegan. You definitely don't have to buy some liquid version. And anytime that you are looking for a B12 supplement, you wanna make sure you're getting the methyl version. The methyl cobalamin version. There's no reason to choose methylcobalamin over cyanocobalamin. It is more expensive, it's not nearly as well studied, and you have to use more of it. Cyanocobalamin is safe and cheap and effective. Spirulina. I don't necessarily consider spirulina to be a supplement. I consider this to be a green food. It does have B12 in it. Spirulina has a large amount of inactive B12 analog, which can interfere with B12 absorption and make your condition worse. All the while fooling blood tests and making it look as though your levels are normal. Actual studies using spirulina have not found it to be useful at all, and some have even found it to be harmful. In the one study published in medical journals testing spirulina, B12 activity actually decreased in people fed a combination of spirulina and nori. In the autumn 2005 issue of their newsletter, The Vegan, the UK Vegan Society reported on a trial they performed using Corella and spirulina to treat elevated MMA levels. Three people with abnormal levels were given spirulina and their levels remained abnormal. Spirulina is the last thing that you want to be taking if you have low B12 levels. The bottom line is that the consensus is clear. This is not a controversial topic at all. The consensus among mainstream organizations and doctors and even vegan organizations and vegan doctors is that every vegan needs to supplement for B12. Christina is just, oh God, she's doing such a huge disservice to her viewers, to veganism on the whole, making it seem like B12 deficiency isn't a big deal, saying that it's essential that people get tested for it before just taking a supplement, a totally safe supplement that can help you prevent nerve damage. <laughs> it's so dangerous. I don't think she's trying to endanger anyone. I think her intentions are good. I just think she's so caught up in this natural thing that she she just can't even see all the evidence that's around her. She can't just come right out and say, take your B12, every single one of you, because it would mean admitting that the diet isn't perfect. The diet isn't natural. And look, Christina, if you really want natural, try this for a supplement. I mean, that's how all of our closest relatives in the wild get their B12. Probably doesn't fit with your brand though. Christina is delusional. She's well-intentioned, but she's delusional and she's dangerous. She's promoting dangerous advice and there's nothing we can really do about it except promote the truth. Anytime you see someone sharing this video of hers or other, you know, whatever nonsense about B12, that we don't need to take B12, that you can get B12 from the air, whatever, don't wash your fruits and vegetables, you'll get enough B12, anything like that, then please speak up, say something. Even if it's just, I mean, really the best thing to do, if you can, I know you can't really link to stuff in YouTube comments because it'll just go to spam, but in other places, you know, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, just link to Jack Norris's article. It's excellent, it's very detailed, and you know, it may not convince the person you are giving it to, but if it's a public forum, again, like on Facebook or something, there are probably other people looking and they may read that and, they may learn something and maybe they weren't supplementing and then they start supplementing. It's it's so important. And that's pretty much it. Um, she does go into a few other nutrients. She talks about vitamin D and how much sun she gets and how much she loves sunshine. Um, I find it interesting, you know, how obsessed raw foodists are with preventing cancer through their diet by eating fruits and vegetables. But they don't seem to worry so much about the sun. They don't seem to worry so much about getting super, super tan and like sun damage, DNA damage, cancer. 
She also talks about eating tons and tons of greens. I think she says two to three pounds of greens every single day for raw vegans to meet your needs for like zinc and stuff like that. And that's absolutely, absolutely true. Um, I certainly don't recommend raw, but if you are into it, if that's what you want to do, you need to eat tons of greens, especially if you're trying to do her type of raw, the, the high fruit way, eating lots and lots of fruit and not a whole lot of fat, not a whole lot of nuts. If you're eating a bunch of nuts, particularly like pumpkin seeds, which have a lot of zinc, um, then you probably don't need to go so heavy on the greens. You still need to eat a lot of greens. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. And she recommends the, the Infowars iodine. That took me, that took me by surprise. I, I, I don't even... Okay. Anyway, uh, I guess that's it. Take your B12. Please take your B12. It is so, so, so important. It's the most important thing you can do as a vegan, because look, if you don't have your health, how are you going to stay vegan, right? How are you going to help others? If you are not healthy, you can't, you can't do anything, right? Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Comments and questions down below. If you want to subscribe, that's awesome. And if you want to uh, support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. Thanks again, and I'll have a new video very soon.